back with us still talking football despite funding issues and inadequate support from the Jamaica Football Federation, JFF. The reggae girls have been flying the Jamaican flag high and proudly for the last four years, qualifying for two FIFA World Cups in that time. The girls finished third at the recent CONCACAF Championships in Mexico and along with qualifying for next year's World Cup in New Zealand and Australia, they are one game away from a place at the 2024 Paris Olympics. Those outside the country would believe the success of the Reggae Girls amid the challenges is driven in part by a robust domestic program for the women's game. They would be wrong. Domestic women's football has been dormant in recent years with no organized competition beyond the secondary school level since 2018. Earlier this year, the JFF said it was working assiduously to have the Women's League resume in 2022. But August is almost done and we are still waiting on a concrete announcement. On Wednesday, the JFF boss, Michael Ricketts, who attended the launch of the new Issa schoolboy football season on Wednesday, told a reporter, Brian Pitter, that his team is working hard to start the competition in November. Well, we are looking at a date. In fact, we have um, all the teams have already been registered. We are looking at a possible start date sometime in November. Um, we just need to put some logistics in place and then we can formalize and then make a public announcement. But we have not given up on, on that. We are, in fact, we are having discussions with some prospective sponsors and hopefully we'll be able to make an announcement soon. Well, the truth is that um, we were able to have, I think, eight teams registered and we're hoping to have spread it a little bit more so we could have at least maybe 12 teams. But it's the start. And um, when this, this uh, administration took office, there was absolutely no women's football. And we were able to have had it restarted. Um, the COVID pandemic would have strangled the whole footballing process. But we are working assiduously to ensure that there's a restart and soon. State Minister in the Ministry of Sport, Alanda Terrelong, emphasized in his speech at that same schoolboy football launch on Wednesday, that there's need for more investment in women's team sport in Jamaica. He said, when you look at the quality that we get from team sports like Reggae Girls and the Sunshine Girls, it is important that we put more funding into those sports because it brings Jamaica on display and adds to our global reputation, not just as track stars, but as sports stars, irrespective of the discipline. Minister Terry Long continued, so again, I urge corporate sponsors to hop on board because they need the support. The government can't do it alone. The coaches and athletes can't do it alone. And that injection of capital into their holistic development could go a far way. Joining us to continue this discussion is the former head coach of the most successful domestic women's football team in Jamaica's history, Barbican FC, Charles Charlie Edwards. Charlie, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And um, to you, George, Lance and Maria. Thanks for having me on the program and good evening to all the listeners. Yeah, man. Thank you on our behalf and on theirs. Charlie, we are here in August. JFF said earlier this year they would get it done. Now we are hearing about November, but I don't know if you've seen anything concrete yet that convinces you that November is possible. Based on your best information, where are we? Are we any closer to having the women start their domestic league? I haven't heard anything much from the JFF. I've been hearing outside sources saying November, but personally, November is a very bad day for men's football to restart because they're going to go down into the Christmas break and then you're going to go into January, which is also when the schoolgirls league will start. So I need an explanation as to how that will coexist with the women's league for schools because quite a few number of players come from the league. So you're going to have a clash, right? It's going to be a big problem. My problem is whatever the JFF is saying right now, I'm not very confident in their work. First, I heard January. We had a Zoom meeting. We discussed it in length. We told them that the window for women's football was always July, August. We didn't hear anything back from them. Nothing happened. Then we heard July. Nothing happened. We heard nothing from the JFF again. And then we heard September. Now we are heading into September. Now we are here in November. Now, how can you have confidence in the JFF with all the, the things which have happened since January until now? 
All right. You, 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 you answered a several questions there by that opening statement. Thank you for that. Charlie, so it, it was shut down. The switch was flicked in 2018. How easy is it to flick that switch, to light it up again, to get the women's football program up and running again? What does it need to get up and running after that hard shutdown in 2018? Put it higher on the priority list, as simple as that. I think women's football is on the bottom of their priority list. I, I know they're going to be upset with me saying that, and they may come out and say no. But if it was on the priority list, wouldn't it be dealt with properly? Now, remember, they are the same people who shut down women's football at one stage, the senior team, rather. And Sidella Marley is the one who came in as an ambassador when Captain Burrell appointed her ambassador for women's football, and she was adamant that the senior program should come back on track. And she has worked assiduously to get the program going again. Now, all of a sudden, 2019, we went to work up. Everybody's jumping on the bandwagon again. And I'm happy for that. Don't get me wrong. But I want to see women's football up on the list, given some priority. Because if you can start that men's program within their schedule window, although we know that's a big money earner for you at the JFF, and the women's program doesn't really turn the turnstiles that much, but still... You have two teams back-to-back -back going to the World Cup. There's a momentum there for us to ride. There are not much local players in it. Wouldn't you try to get the program going so as to try and get the, some of the local players to try out to get into the team? A lot of the players are losing confidence. Whenever they start the league, they're talking about eight teams. They may have less than that because a lot of the players are very much disheartened and losing complete interest in playing women's football. Yes, Charles, and if we are to think about it from a financial position, you know, based on what you just said, I think it would be easier if we were to groom our local players because Jamaica Reggae Girls has, you know, sent a statement showing that, you know, they are at the top of the crop when you think about their performances. They've been in the headlines only for successes. Having home, local-based, homegrown players would, you know, cost the JFF less as opposed to having to go out each year to find players, you know, with Jamaican heritage. I totally agree with you, but I, I would differ a little bit and say, have the homegrown players, put them up with the overseas-based players, because I don't think you have to find them so much, because success brings players in. Whenever you have a successful program, players, players will be coming to you. You don't have to go searching for them. So now, combine the two and grow your program. Now, corporate Jamaica will be happy for that. Now, if you're a sponsor, why would you want to step up to sponsor the, the local league when... Nothing is going on for them. No players making the regular girls' team. It, it seems like a waste of time. Sponsors are interested in mileage. Yeah, and you know, speaking about mileage, there are so many young uh, girls here in Jamaica that, of course, have aspirations to become a footballer, but now they are left with no choice, Charles, because, you know, they just have to hope that they get the opportunity or somebody spots them. Bingo. Perfectly said. Mm. Yeah. It's a, it's a struggle to get the players out right now. All, a lot of my players, when I've spoken to them, they're like, Coach, I'm not too sure I want to play in a football. You know, where am I going to go? Mm. What is out there for me? Charlie, on a, on a point of, of clarity here, what is your current involvement with women's football? I personally am still with the Barbican team as far as I'm concerned. So as long as Barbican is going to go in the league, I will be the coach for that. Other than that, all I do is coach overseas right now because... Um, there's not much for me here to do because yeah, but, there's no men's program up and running. Yeah, but Barbican you know, didn't contest the last few women's tournaments, did they? The last two we didn't because um, we found that the, the way the JSF was operating, because the first time we never contested it, the JSF was not sure. They never had the competition the year before. And that year, they weren't sure they were going to have the competition. They struggled to get sponsorship, and then eventually FIFA gave them some money to put on the competition and last house came in as part sponsors and they gave us like a one month notice to get the this thing up and running and for me that was not good enough because if you're told that you may not have a competition and then bam you're on we now will have to go back out there resource you know the finances get finances coming in because i am not going to play without a good medical setup i'm not sending my players out there without properly being attired 
you know, physio, all these things, a meal plan, all these things. I'm not into the substandard thing because that's part of my game plan. And when they told me that I had only one month, I had said to the directors then of the league that if you struggle to find sponsorship, what do you expect from us, the clubs? You can't give us one month to do it. And I was told that I need to go deep and get the team up and going. I just dropped it because that to me was impossible at the time. We actually tried, but we couldn't get anything. So that was the first year we dropped out of it. And the second year, I just didn't bother to go in. It's the sign that it's heartening. It turns you off. That sort of manipulation. And then, you know, you're going through the same problem. You know what the clubs are going to go through. And that same year, I saw quite a few teams who could not afford to train. Some were training one day a week, and some were training zero days a week. Some of the players were out there with boots taped up and stuff like that. No, that's pathetic. Mm. If we want to grow the sport, we need to come together and work together as a team and grow the sport properly. Mm. And that is why I say that women's football in Jamaica is not on top of the priority list. Yeah. Sorry, but that's my view. Charlie, we're out of time. We have to go. I'll just ask you quickly as, as we go, uh, based on your best information with your rival team, the teams that you usually play in the women's uh, top flight, are there six teams island-wide who, will be in a, who are in a position to be ready to go in six weeks? I'm pretty sure they can find it. I, right now, I know of about only two. It's maybe Olympic, and I think Fraser's week will be coming back with a good run this year. So those are the only two I can account for. I've heard some big names. I'm not sure, and I don't want to call the names who may not enter. So I'm not sure what's going on. Mm. All right, Charlie, thank you very much. We hope that word comes soon and that you'll be able to put the Barbican House in order as best as you can for another tilt at the title. Thank you very much, and have a good evening, everyone. All right, then. Thanks. Charlie Edwards, he is the coach of Jamaica's most successful local football team, Barbican FC, and the most uh, decorated coach in the history of domestic women's football in Jamaica. At the track, after this break.